If you struggle with setting boundaries during a talking stage, take a walk with me. One of the first things that I want you to remember is that your self-worth is reflected in your relationships with others. You can also say you teach people how to treat you by what you tolerate. I'm not a huge fan of that statement because it feels pretty powerless. After all, what is it exactly that we're tolerating? And that's really a space where you need to set a boundary instead of making a victim statement. You know, that place you go to when things don't work out the way that you expected them to? Why does this always happen to me? And in the personal development world, we say things like, this is something that happened for you, not to you. But I also want you to know that not everything is a lesson. Sometimes not so great things happen, and that's why it's important to have a good support system around you. And if you want to learn more about victim consciousness, be sure to check out the Blueprint Podcast, the episode with Dr. Kelly Brogan. And if you've made it this far, congratulations. You've gotten to the place where you can admit to yourself that there's things that you like and things that you don't like. You might be feeling like you're tapped into your nervous system right now, feelings of anger, frustration, or anxiousness. And that can be your early warning signal that it's time to set a boundary. Remember, boundaries help you keep people in your life. And when you stick to them, you end up filling up your self-worth cup. And if you're spending time around the wrong people and you try to set a boundary, they may say things like, I don't like that word. They may even become offended and feel like they did something wrong. And you setting a boundary takes them back to being 12 years old again. I told you not to do that. When are you going to listen to me? The other part of that scenario is that they often lack the self-awareness to meet you where you are. They'll say that you're selfish and the internet favorite, narcissist. And what's going on in their mind is that they have to change the way that they think about you. They're no longer going to receive from you whatever it was that they were getting from that relationship. You're changing the rules of the relationship that were set up a long time ago, and now they have to change their perception of you. And of course, that means they have to rewrite the file they have of you in the back of their brain. This is why it's important for you to not only set the boundary, but also hold it. And people can be very persuasive, which makes it difficult for you to hold that boundary with them. And of course, you want to be sure that you keep an open mind. There's going to be times where you get presented with new information and you're going to have to compromise. Or don't. That's always up to you. That's why it's important to take the time to do a self-check-in. Ask yourself, is this situation in alignment with my goals, my values, and standards for a relationship with me? Not me. You. Phrase it for yourself. So what does setting boundaries look like during the talking stage? As my friend Charlotte says, welcome to the peasant party, the talking stage ends when you go on that second date, because now you're dating. Let that definition of a talking stage be the first boundary that you set with yourself. If people want to live in a three-month situationship and call that a talking stage, let them. You don't have to participate in that. Are you tracking? Do you see where this is going? Next, if you're more anxious, you're going to slow things down a little bit. Let things unfold naturally. Do your due diligence and research the heck out of that person, but don't create a story about them in your head. This is where you get to tap into your discernment and ask yourself, how does this person make you feel? And do you even like them? And be honest with yourself, how many people have you dated where it was amazing in the first few weeks, and by three months you were like, nah. And then people tell me, well, it's already been three months and I don't want to start over again. So you're going to spend all that time with someone that you're not particularly thrilled about because why? You think maybe that's the best you can do? Sadly, that statement gets made more often than I'd like to admit. So instead of waiting for the next best thing to come along, do both of you a favor and let that relationship go so that you can both find what is meant for you. The reality is that person's trying to love you and you're tolerating them. Not cool. Not cool. Cool.